see the, the job of the governor is to do, to, to analyze and understand the obstacles and the possibilities that are facing us. It's, it's like stepping up to where you can look down into a maze and figure out how to get from one side to the other, what the roadblocks are, the obstacles, the quickest way to get from one place to another. And it's really, a, it's a very interesting thing to have, have the opportunity to do. And it's just a, a, just a, a handful of things I want to tell you that I, I've seen in, in the last few years. And I, I know you saw Mike, for example, you've been right in, in the middle of this. And uh, it, it's something different. But I'm reminded of a cute story as I try to communicate this about the, the young couple that got married. They didn't talk much. They didn't communicate very much. They sort of by telepathy, I guess, but they didn't talk, but they met each other and said, I love you, baby, I love you too, let's get married, okay, they got married. Didn't talk much, but they had a happy, happy life going until the mother-in-law moved in with them, just moved in. Well, they didn't talk about it much, but uh, finally after about three months, the young groom said to his blessing, the old box of pride, said, baby, don't you think we ought to find your mama someplace else to stay? She said, my mama, I thought she was your mama. <laughs> Lack of communication. What I want to say to you, I've just come back from Chetwa, which makes ball bearings. They're up in York County, and they are red hot. You ought to see that place. They had out in the parking lot there the parts from vehicles, cars, to all sorts of engines, motorcycles, everything that used their ball bearings. Some of in wind tunnels, for example, they had one that was this high off the top of this stage, a big ball bearing, and they had a little small one. And it's a German company. It's a big German company. It has 89,000 employees uh, worldwide, and their American headquarters is in York County. They just, it's it's uh, in Fort Mill, and they're expanding that now, and that's what we were up there for. Oh, oh, I guess it was last week I went to see Bosch. Uh, Bosch has over 300,000 employees worldwide. And of course, BMW is huge, and they make more vehicles that plant in the grill than they do anywhere else. We have all these big, big companies, and they're all coming here, I, I think, for the same reason. And those are the, the, the building blocks that we have build on that uh, started a long time ago and has been strengthened and built and fortified by generation after generation. And one of them, they all tell me it's the culture. It says the people of South Carolina are different. And it occurred to me that if you take all of the, the institutions and the buildings and the landscapes and take the current people out and put them in a new crop or somewhere else, it wouldn't be the same as state. So we, we have a great advantage. As you know, most of us know each other. You're just a phone call away from the person that you need to speak to in order to get something done. But with the great research universities that are cascading ideas and new technologies and innovations down, and that creates more and more businesses and more ideas and more and more jobs. With the great ports, which, by the way, the money is in the budget now. We'll be able to start the bridging uh, soon is $355 million, and that will take us to 52 feet. There are three other ports on the East Coast that will be close. That's Miami, Norfolk, and New York, New Jersey. The estimates are that the Port of Charleston, the Port of New York, New Jersey will be the main ports on the Atlantic Coast once that bridging is done. But at 52 feet, that means those big ships, those Panamax ships, as they're called, we can get into our harbor, get into our port, they are 24 hours a day, that is 52 feet is the, is the mean low tide, because we'll be able to have ships coming in and going out as wide enough at the same time, 24 hours a day. With the technical college system, that is, that is the real key that I have seen that we need to concentrate on. Here's what I believe has happened. We used to have an economy where you had the unskilled labor that required not much education, and then you had another kind of job that required a 
four-year degree, at least two years, but a four-year degree, or maybe even postgraduate degree. And then you had a lot of jobs in the middle. Well, in the last 30 or 40 years, those jobs in the middle have expanded out. And they're not the same kind of jobs they used to be. You still have the unskilled labor, and you still have the, the academic qualifications that you need in some other. But those jobs in the middle have, have just exploded. And one of the people up there at the at, uh, chapel was explaining it in terms of the fourth industrial revolution. And I, I think that, that is, that's what we're, we're in. And it is, it's based on this idea, this nanotechnology. Everything's changed. And we see the, we see evidence of it all over the place. But in order for us to remain competitive, and there's no doubt that we are competitive, there's no doubt we're expanding quicker than anybody else. We've got great companies that could go anywhere or come and go. We've got great companies that are here that are looking to expand. People are staying here. People who are retiring or a lot of these people that have three or four homes, they all have one somewhere in South Carolina. How much work is just off, off the chart? Uh, everybody lives in Charleston. We've got plenty of electric power so far. We've got a little hurdle to get over that. But we, uh, we must maintain our competitive edge on these new jobs, a new type of economy that's in the middle. We have 60,000 jobs out there right now in this state for the, for the studies that are looking for people. We don't have people that can do those jobs. So it centers on a technical college, a technical, sophisticated, more sophisticated kind of education and training than we've had in the past. And the state has some good programs with Red ESC and others that move in to these big plants and businesses and work with
skills in these new technologies is not just the South, in South Carolina, it's all over the country, and these businesses that I <coughs> mentioned uh, have other uh, plants around the world, and they say it's a worldwide problem. So this is an opportunity for us, for South Carolina. Every state does not have a technical college system. Every state does not have three major research universities that creates this cascade of ideas and jobs. They certainly don't have a port. Most states don't even have an ocean. They don't have any. <laughs> we have all of that. And if we can use our heads and stay smart and keep our competitors' edge sharp and ahead of, of the rest, we can outrun the, the rest of, of the states. And if we do that, we'll have great opportunities for prosperity and children to grow up and be happy and healthy and get educated. And and our state and our